Friday afternoon, and the cars can be seen assembling at the McDonald Bath Spa Hotel, which is the Rally HQ for the inaugural Lombard Rally Bath. What a selection there is. 1960s Minis, Volkswagen Beetles, Porsche 911 and 9146s, through many Ford Escorts, Toyotas, Vauxhall Chevettes and Triumph TR7 V8s from the 1970s, to Opel Mantas, Rover SD1s and Audi Quattros from the 1980s. And it, the road With names such as Blomquist, McRae, Aitken outside. Walker and Llewellyn in attendance, the spectators are in for a treat the following day. Yeah, I think it'll be very interesting to... Uh, well, when you see the number of cars and everything that's here, it's, it's going to be interesting for, for the spectators anyway. Uh, and to see some of the, 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 the stages down here that we've seen before, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Saturday morning and the cars make their way from the McDonald Bath Spa Hotel and travel a short distance to the start at Great Pulteney Street to replicate the scene from 1976, 1980, 1983 and 1986 Lombard RAC rallies when the event started and finished here. Over 120 cars made the start, led away by the Welsh rally winning Mini of the late great Barry Wizzo Williams, and crewed here by Andy Ace Harrison with Peter Scott sat beside him. The second car on the road and the oldest car on the event is the 1935 Aldis of Rob Stoneman. Event organiser Tim Nash was astonished to see the amount of spectators lining the road, taking photos and chatting to the crews before they set off. left Bath and headed towards the first stage of the day at Longleat House, the fog had descended, turning the morning into a traditional Lombard rally from years gone by. who are reminiscing over past rallies, someone said, wouldn't it be great to drive these stages again? And the seed had been sown. Event organiser Tim Nash set to work to bring back Lombard to rallying and to recreate part of what the Lombard RAC rally stood for in the 70s and 80s. We wanted to recreate the opportunity to drive some long lost rally stages in rally cars or even classic cars that might have taken part in that iconic rally and to bring those cars back to areas that had not seen rally cars often for many years, Nash said. Well, after many months of planning, meetings with landowners and councils, the cars can now be seen travelling sedately along the roads of Longley's house. The event was always going to be classed as a touring event, so that the participants could enjoy the route with its stunning views that the South West's countryside has to offer, rather than the stress of trying to reach the next stage without incurring any time penalties. <laughs> Coffee break at the second stage held at Cricket St Thomas before the cars travel across the stage which is being run in the reverse direction of the 1976 RAC rally event. Fastest time back then was Maurizio Verini in his works Fiat 131 a Bath at two minutes dead. Back in 1976 this was stage 44 out of 76 along 2030 stage and road miles. 
Compared to this year's British round of the World Rally Championship, where there were only 23 stages and 875 combined miles, the crews back then certainly knew that they'd been in a rally which tests both man and machine. This looks serious. What, what's, what's happening? Clutch cable's gone. Oh dear. after the cricket turn and we got to take a junction left. Come on, let's go round again. Yeah, do you think we get away with that? Let's try it. No. <laughs> oh. I think we, we wouldn't. Let's get the whisk up. <laughs> Should we give it a go? No. You sure? Yeah, no. Keep going. Oh, come on. No. No! <laughs> You're such a spoil sport. Now we're quits. I didn't do donuts. You wouldn't let me go round again. Yeah, but left here. <laughs> Wiscombe Park, which had been staged 45 in 1976, where joint fastest were Roger Clark and Pentia Ricola, stopping the clocks at 1 minute 53 seconds. Penty was leading the rally at this time, but Roger would be the eventual rally winner, both of them in Ford Escorts. spectator viewing areas already in place. This was where the organisers requested that spectators ought to watch the cars from the various spectating points laid out across the 914 metre course. Whether watching out in the open or at the tight hairpin, which catches quite a few of the cars out, the spectators were able to see some great action.
Jimmy, what did you make of today? Uh, all right, to the second last stage, we had a bit of a problem there. The, the actual steering wheel got pulled out of my hand and got up around a slippy hairpin and we clipped the wall and took the front wing off. So we managed to get back in the stage. Somebody went back in the stage, got the wing, screwed it on and come back. So not, not ideal, not ideal. Uh, Stig, how was today in the quattro? Well, it was good fun and nice to be back in the car like that. And fantastic weather today and a nice lot of nice countryside what would be your uh, favorite stage to drive today i don't know it was all of them all of them were quite rememberable from old times it was quite nice to run over them again what would be your favorite stage of the ones today uh poor lock one yeah. and two two definitely because it was up on the top it was a bit drier and you could really sort of give it some, but the problem was with no notes or, or maps, you were driving blind. But other than that, fantastic. Yeah, really enjoyed it.